Hey, what's up, Yvonne? It is uh, Friday, of course, and I am here at work, as you may notice from the chalkboard behind me. Um, but it's Friday, so uh, even though it's been a pretty busy day and I'm at work right now getting ready for a busy night on the floor, um, I still wanted to make sure that I brought you a $15 Friday. So um, last week we talked about decoding Italian wine labels, which is incredibly difficult. I still have trouble with it and I really wanted to sort of stay on the same track, but the weather is warming, the, the spring, the summer weather is starting to appear, and um, I wanted to give you a lighter, sort of fruitier, fun spring red. Now, if you have ever watched my weekly wine picks, um, th about this time last year, I talked about this wine um, because I love it for some of these transitional months where the weather is warming. And not that I'm like a seasonal drinker, not that I'm somebody that needs to drink um, light bodied reds according to whatever the temperature is, but it is kind of nice sometimes. Um, anyway, so today I'm talking about Bilchetto. Also, um, if uh, you heard me talk about it before, is sort of to me. in its youth without it being uh, too tannic or too young or not mature enough. Um, and it's typically how the Italians do it. The, uh, the dolcetto grape, meaning little sweet one, uh, is a grape that they typically consume while the Barolos and the Barbarescos in Piedmont are getting ready to be consumed. Um, so anyway, we are here today with Dolcetto Dalla. So I'm sorry if the lighting is a little bit weird in here, um, but let's break down this label again and I'll give you a close up. Uh, hopefully you can see a little better here. Um, over here. Anyway, um, up here you have Azealia. This is the producer. This is uh, the house that makes this wine. Underneath of it, Dolcetto Dalba. So this is that DOC that I talked about last week. Um, Dolcetto Dal Dalba is the DOC within the region of Piedmont, um, meaning that the DOC guarantees the, the, the grape and the, um, guarantees the specifications of a particular region if it is on the label. So Dolcetto Daba indicates that this wine is going to be 100% Dolcetto. Um, underneath up here, you have this little thing that says, I know it's hard to read, I'm sorry guys. Um, Rico del, uh, del, my Italian's not great. Um, del Oriolo, um, 2015 is the vintage. Um, and then this is uh, Luigi Scavino, that's the family that this wine is coming from. So just kind of briefly breaking down this label so you guys can get a general understanding of how to decipher this. Um, this is a wine that I actually bought at my local grocery store, but it is available on wine.com um, and it's looking like it's available across the country. I even checked uh, the state of Michigan, which I know some of you out there watching. Um, Michigan sometimes is excluded from the things that I pick for $15 Friday and for some of my other picks, um, but it is available in Michigan, which is very exciting. So um, it may be available in a different vintage, it's fine. Um, so this is perfect, 2013 would be perfect. So let's get into the wine. Mm, and this is a cork, it has an actual cork on it, no more screw top. Um, okay, so on the nose, really bright red, kind of ripe uh, cherry, a little bit of violet. So last week the wine was a little, it smelled a lot like Sonoma Pinot, it was more strawberry. This is definitely leaning more towards that Bing cherry, really nice, almost cherry pie. And it has that like sweet, sour, tart fruit that you might find in a pie um, with fresh picked cherries. So on the nose, really lovely. The quality of the fruit is gonna be right in that perfectly ripe um, place. That's not overripe, it's not underripe, it's just kind of even keeled. I'm not getting a whole lot of like earthen things here. There's a little bit of like a spice box component. There's a little bit of um, a, a, a clovey, cardamom, vanilla um, nose to it, but nothing overpowering. This is, this is an easy drinking wine. This is a wine that if you, um, I recommend it for people if they're, um, if they're going to a dinner party, if they're going to um, a friend's house for a picnic. Dolcetto is always a really great wine. And the other thing I love about Dolcetto is a lot of the big producers in Italy, um, they make their own little Dolcetto. So it's a great little sidekick wine. Um, 
if you really want like a cool producer but you're you don't want to spend more than like 20 or 30 dollars the dolcetto is a great value for that there's a ton of different producers i will link um the weekly wine picks with the other dolcetto that i recommended that was around 24 25 dollars um after i finished this live video so palette and i'm not spitting um so don't tell my boss mm. honestly it tastes so much like Cru Beaujolais. It's kind of dark, it's pretty brambly, it's very raspberry, it's very cherry. People always say there's not a lot of acid um, with Dolcetto. I tend to disagree. I actually think there's quite a bit of acid here uh, as compared to something like um, a California one, which definitely wouldn't have this much acid. I get it, I get a decent amount. This is pretty dark, it's pretty brambly. It's got a little bit of like a, a tart cherry thing going on in the palette and then as far as structure goes really very light bodied but it's got a nice amount of viscosity so you still feel like it's a wine that can stand up with food it can go with charcuterie um it's not a really some people call it like you know it's very thin it's not a thin wine um meaning it doesn't uh lack in the viscosity department it definitely has a little bit of of weight a little bit of oomph to it so it's not like a wimpy pinot um i know some of you out there are not into those light 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 body pinots this has definitely a little bit more girth and dimension on it Mm. Second sip, it's just so lovely and bright. Treat this just like you would Cru Beaujolais. It's a little bit cleaner than the Cru Beaujolais have been in the past. Um, I've loved like the Morgan Lampierre, but they tend to have a little bit more of that funkiness going on. Some of them are even a little bit bready. This is clean, it's light, it's bright, it's easy. I like it with a little bit of a chill on it. Um, I think it helps to kind of give that wine a little bit something extra um and as far as what you eat this with this is such a fun free wine you can do it with pizza you can do it with pasta you can do it with roasted meat charcuterie um it's just a great across the board red wine that i think a lot of people really really will love so um 14.99 you can find it on wine.com um azalea again is the uh is the overarching brand, the family of the wine. Um, Dolcetto Dalba is what you're looking for. Um, and then you can also keep that in your crawl for if you're going to a wine store. Um, that's a really easy thing to ask for. I'm looking for a Dolcetto. Uh, I'm looking for a Dolcetto Dalba, meaning I'm looking for a Dolcetto from the region of Alba in Piedmont. Um, and then this is the Cuvée, this Brick Odell Oriolo. Guys, I will put everything in the description below so it's really easy to find. I know the lighting is not so wonderful, so it's hard to see this label. Um, but I will also, uh, I'll be sure to upload a picture of this to my Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, follow me at Um And I'll be able to, to put a picture and a link to the wine on, uh, on my Instagram story. So, um, I have to go to work. It's a busy night, but I definitely wanted to make sure that I got... Uh, this video done and, and I brought you a $15 Friday. I'm trying to stay consistent um, Obviously, I had a great week earlier this week uh, If you didn't catch my video that I uploaded last night um, I had a little poolside time then I tasted some old wines at Charles Krug, which is amazing um, Guys, I wish you a wonderful weekend. Cheers and um, I hope to see you on Instagram until the next YouTube upload Have a wonderful Friday and I'll catch you later. Bye guys